I want to show you how the Dynamics GP fixed assets can be used to depreciate your assets and also some of the reporting involved. So let's take a look at it. For depreciation, there's really there's two things you can do. You can do a depreciation projection, which is projecting depreciation out into the future, reporting on that, then also just running the depreciation. Let's take a look at the projection first. If you scroll down, we'll go to the financial area page, we'll scroll down and go to the fixed asset routines here. Let's hit projection. And what we want to do is run a projection on the internal book and we want to run it as a target date as 123118. Let's just do that. Let's we'll start the book there and then we'll start the projection. So what this is going to do is it's going to go out and look at the fixed asset records and then it's going to determine what the depreciation is up to December 31st, 2018. Uh, one thing you'll notice on the fixed asset module is it has this progress button. It doesn't automatically show you that. If you have a longer process in fixed assets, you can always go to that and see um, where it's at, uh, what asset it's currently working on. This one's completed. You can see that. So the next step then is just reporting. What we just did here is we created the projection. And the next thing then to do is to actually run the projection report. So let's go to fixed asset reports here and we'll open that up and these are different options that you have but we'll do an annual projection and we'll look at a detail level which would be looking asset by asset what the projected depreciation is for each asset so let's run that let's print it right here and this will give you an idea of the projection report it's just showing asset by asset what the expected depreciation is in this case in the next two years from my data you can see that here you can run at a summary level or a detailed level Next, let's look at the depreciation itself. What I want to do is I want to depreciate. So I go to the routines and fixed assets, hit the depreciation button here. And I'm going to depreciate as of June 30th in my current year. And let's take the internal book there and move that over. And the internal book is the one that's connected to my general ledger. It has a number of assets in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the depreciation routine. And what this will do is create depreciation records for each of my assets up to June 30th, 2017. So I'm going to run this. And we can take a look at the progress button here. Redisplay it. And it's done. So now let's look at the results of that. I recently put in a fixed asset and we'll go back and take a look at that now. So I'm going to go over here. I'll go up to the cards area under fixed assets, look at general, and I'm going to look at the last one I added, which is this one here. You can see that I added it as of May 1st, 2017. Now I just depreciated it up to June 30th, 2000, 2017. I can take a look at the depreciation record here by going to the go to button, going to the book, selecting the correct book, which in this case is internal, and you can see that it has depreciated. And I can drill back and see the life-to-date depreciation on that. It actually created two depreciation records, transactions for May and for June. You can see those listed right here. You can also see that the batch number is blank, which means I have not yet rolled it over to the general ledger. So let's do that next. To do the general ledger interface with fixed assets and GP, let's scroll down to the routines here and we're going to look at GL posting, select GL posting. And I'm going to, I always leave the beginning date 00, zero and I do this so I pick up everything that's available in fixed assets to move over to the general ledger. And then my posting date, I want to use the ending period. I'm going to use 2017 and I'm going to post through June. So you can see how I have that specified here. June, the sixth month, I actually have three characters that I fill in there, and 006, and then the transaction date, I want that as June 30th, and then I can fill in a comment if I want to. So now I'm just going to continue, and what this is going to do, it's going to go through and look at all the transactions in the fixed asset system, and some of these might be purchases, they might be retirements, they might be movements, they may be depreciation. It's going to take all of those, create a journal entry in Dynamics GP. So let's do that. We'll take a look at it. It's going to create the batch. It tells you what batch it is. So hit continue. Let's take a look at it. The results.
And here are the results. This is a lengthy report. It's 11 pages long. And you can see that I've got some accumulated depreciation. It's got all the assets listed right here. It's a nice tie back to the actual assets. And if I scroll down, I'll see other types of transactions. These are fixed asset ads. You can see there I had four that I added in this period. And then as I scroll down here, you'll see depreciation here as well. There's some other types of transactions here. So now all these transactions have now been summarized and put into a general journal entry. So let's take a look at that. We're still on the financial area page here and go up and look at my general ledger transactions and let's just look at the last one here which should be it and there it is so here's the summarized transaction that was created from that GL import process excuse me the GL export process you can see that here and what you want to do here is just validate that it's correct and if it is then you go ahead and post it the next thing I want to take a look at is some of the reporting that's available in fixed assets um, there's a number of different reports that are available here in reports. You can see I've got these here. The one that I use probably the most is the inventory one right here. And specifically, I use the property ledger. And let me just show you this. Um, this is a nice report. I'll insert that here and print it out. And the reason I like this is because it has most of the information that I would ever want for fixed assets. The fixed asset reporting in Dynamics GP is basically list. It's list of assets. And you have the ability to select which assets you want to report. And this is a very good example. Here I've got this asset here. I've got a number of different assets. They're listed here. I've got the different books that mean depreciation be made and and I've got these key figures, which are very important. I've got the cost basis and accumulated depreciation, and then the net book. This is a very useful report. You can slice and dice this to get the, just the information you want. And again, the reporting in Dynamics GP fixed asset is primary lists. Now, fixed asset all com also comes with a smart list object. Let's take a look at that. Go up here to smart list. This is smart list. I can open this up, take a look at the fixed asset ones. There's basically three. I've got fixed assets. It's just a list of my assets here. And I've got the fixed assets with the depreciation. This is a real handy one as well. And then I also have purchases for the fixed assets. So this is just a regular smart list object. It comes with the system. It's available to anyone. So this was a very basic look at Dynamics GP fixed assets as far as the depreciation and reporting. I think you'll find that depreciation and reporting is pretty simple to do in fixed assets. If you haven't tried it out, you should try it out now.